Hello, everyone, and welcome to episode number 202 of the Canadian Football Countdown. Technical glitch there, sorted that out. A proud member of the Canadian Football Podcast Network. Uh, we're here with another one of our off-season roundtable episodes here today. We've got a lot of things to talk about from the last two weeks in the CFL. And we'll get into possibly the most controversial segment in the uh, the history of this podcast as we each try to rank our top five CFL quarterbacks in the, uh, the start of a, a new routine segment called The Countdown. It's the Canadian Football Countdown. You've got to have a countdown. I don't know how we're 202 episodes into this and we don't have that. Uh, so we're going to talk quarterbacks in the CFL here today. Uh, before we go any further and bring in the rest of the panel, uh, we do want to acknowledge that the Canadian Football Countdown is brought to you from Treaty 1 Territory, traditional territory of the Anishinaabe Cree, Oja Creek, Dakota, and Dene peoples, and the homeland of the Métis Nation, as well as from Treaty 4 Territory, traditional territory of the Cree, Soto, Dakota, Lakota, Nakota, and Métis Nation. Let's bring in the rest of the panel here this evening. First off, it's the great Trey Colbeck. Trey, how are you doing tonight? fantastic except for i don't know why i came up with this countdown idea man like uh, it was i thought it would be easy but also i was ah i knew it wasn't going to be easy but i thought i don't know we'll get to that i'm doing great adam man loving the boat how it's up buddy hey i gotta wear the team from the east that i support you know what and also that might annoy some winnipeg fans you never know but uh no trey you're just a cruel cruel mister for having to come up with this list tonight and I don't know what we're going to come up with here, but this is this is going to be a very interesting list. Let's put it you know, that way. It, I think it's going to get it's not going to get easier either. If we do other positions, it's going to probably be worse in a way, man. Like, <laughs> yeah, there's only so many quarterbacks. Yeah, we get into like like offensive linemen or like wide receivers, receivers and O linemen is going to be oh. Dead, like oh. <laughs> oh. what about kicker, man? Like, who do you? <laughs> <laughs> no, <laughs> just, no. <laughs> Uh, we're going to cover it all every single time. I, and it might not be just top five at each position. I've got other fun topics we can uh, we can count down going forward here on the Canadian Football Countdown. Other topics on deck here for tonight. The Montreal Alouettes have a new owner. Let's talk about that. Uh, supposedly, the Atlantic expansion is back on the table. If you're hearing what Randy Ambrosi is talking about, uh, we'll talk on that here tonight as well. And uh, Grey Cup 2025 is heading to Winnipeg. Uh, Winnipeg announced as the host city. We'll get into that a little bit later on as well. We're also taking your comments and questions in our live chat uh, on a variety of platforms throughout the night. Thanks to our presenting sponsor, Game Time TV, which you can learn more about at GameTimeTV.ca. See a couple of comments in the chat already. Chris says 202 on a Tuesday. I love it. Uh, good evening to Richard as well. And uh, we already have a suggestion for a top five countdown. Top five Duran Carter moments. Uh, impossible. And- They're all top five. It's impossible. I mean, okay, man. number one has to be when he nailed the coach while going on the side off the sidelines, isn't it? Uh, I don't know. Future episode. We'll, we'll get into it. Uh, But let's touch on the news from the past two weeks uh, here. Uh, First of all, the big one, we found out the morning of our big free agent frenzy show that the CFL took over ownership of the Montreal Alouettes. And uh, they found themselves a new owner now. The CFL very quickly, basically, what, one month, one month ago. Uh, today was when the CFL took over ownership. And uh, it's now going over to Pierre Carl Pelado. I apologize if I botched the name, um, but uh, new owner for the CIA, for the Montreal Alouettes, 61 year old Montreal native, uh, estimated net worth 1.9 billion U.S. dollars. This is according to the article from Three Down Nation. Uh, works for a Montreal based media and telecommunications company. Uh, let's go to you here first, Adam. What do you think of uh, the new ownership deal here for the Alouettes? Well, I really like it. I mean, Pierre Carl Pelado has been known for Quebec Corps for a long time. Uh, has had a very big uh, job of uh, building success within Quebec and the area, which is a really good thing for the CFL. To me, in Quebec City, having a francophone own the place, I think, is worth something, especially in Quebec. Uh, to me, I think you're going to end up with a lot more people. Uh, 
coming out from those northern uh, parts of uh, of uh, Quebec instead of just the Montreal crowd. So to me, I really like this. Uh, I think he's going to do a great job of marketing. I sure hope he does. Uh, if the Montreal social media, Facebook and Twitter page have anything to do with it, they've been on their game since, uh, well, pretty much almost since November last year, uh, making great tweets and everything else. Uh, and Richard in the chat brings up a very good point here. He thinks he's going to want some of that TV rights come up here in two years, I believe it is, 20, uh, 25 or 27, I can't remember. Nevertheless, uh, I don't blame him if he does. Uh, I believe that there should be a separate uh, deal made for Montreal to broadcast games in French, uh, besides RDS in uh, TSN. So if there is a local or de local deal that a guy can do with some of these, I mean, that's how the NHL built up their big uh, TV network was with uh, regional sports networks. So to me, it makes sense. But nevertheless, good, good job to the CFL to find an ownership quickly and well before the season starts so that they can get the ball rolling on other things like the draft and uh, everything else going on. And especially you got to make let your uh, regular season ticket holders know, hey, the future is stable here in Montreal. Trey, what did you think of it? Oh, man, pretty much mirror just what you said. I loved it. Uh, having a local guy can actually speak French. That's what seems to matter there. You know, like they go nuts on Habs fans when the coach or captain can't speak French. And I'm like, why does it matter? It's like, <laughs> but you know, but then having an owner of the team is big. And I agree with Richard. It, it's all about the TV deal. Like if we want to look, maybe it's little apples and oranges, but if we want to compare the XFL and USFL, they each have two or three channels and they're only an eight team league themselves. Right. So, you know, what's, there's nothing wrong with, uh, uh, sorry, uh, nothing wrong with having some competition in there. Um, sorry, I got zoned out hard. I, between Adam sending a private message and then Chris sends one. I'm bad. I got to put my thing on maximum screen so I don't see the comments. But then you guys need to let me know if there's important comments. Okay, I'm so bad at that. Oh, the ADHD is bad. Yes, it's a great deal. Ryan, what do you think? Yeah, I, I'm in the same boat. Uh, you know, getting somebody local seems to be very invested. To be fair, we thought previous ownership was invested as well. I mean, look how invested Gary Stern was this past summer, uh, where he was all over the place promoting the team on social media. And we felt at the time that, uh, you know, the Alouette's ownership was headed in the right direction under him. But then things went south really fast. And we talked about that the past couple of weeks. Uh, here as well, you know, the whole ownership debacle, you know, Sid Spiegel passes away, his estate, you know, taking over ownership of the team, Gary taking a back seat, seems to be some conflict there. All of a sudden the CFL has to step in and take over ownership of it. And, you know, then it seems like we're back to square one. I'm happy it resolved as quickly as it did this time around. You know, only only two weeks versus what was it last time? A whole season, maybe more that the CFL technically owned the Alouettes. So, you know, it was a couple of weeks. You get you get new ownership in place. Clearly, somebody who understands the business side of things, having run such a you know successful media company, somebody who you know understands the local Montreal scene. Like, I, I think it, you're hitting a home run with, with a hire like this, and. You know, the TV deal, like you guys said, was the uh, what is the big part of this to me and the intriguing part of this, because this is we always talk about this being a gate driven league. Right. But attendance around the league has been slowly going down. So if it's going to go down, either a how do you get people back in the seats or the next step is how do you increase those TV deals and having somebody like this on the board? Yeah, when, once the current TV rights are up, like I think that's going to be huge to potentially have you know this extra voice in the uh, in the in the realm there to uh, contribute to those discussions. And the other thing is to keep in mind. I mean, you look at what happened over in BC with Amar Dorman. Dorman is uh, taking over as the owner of the BC Lions, a local guy. You're right. There's a big point of that, Ryan. Local guy knows what people like out in the British Columbia area and has done very wonders over in British Columbia right now for the BC Lions. So I really hope that this is a case of the same thing for the Montreal Alouettes 
and that he has his finger on the pulse, whether it's got buying everybody a deli sandwich over at Schwartz's or it's something else. I mean, whatever works, uh, as long as they get their pickle in Montreal. Uh, oh, it's it's Pie Day today, uh, March 14th. Uh, Richard in chat wants to know top five best pies. Anybody got a quick ranking, 30-second uh, ranking of top five best pies? All Apple's, right, number, so Apple's number one for me. That's all I got. No, no. Lemon meringue pie or Saskatoon berry. One of the two. It's got to be the two. One of the two. Drake, what's uh, number one? I, I, my number one's pumpkin, boys. I pumpkin with the oh man, I love pumpkin pie with a bunch of whipped cream up on there. Ooh. Chris, you know what? That's a very good one too. Cherry pie. I mean, that's probably gonna be number three on my list. Uh, number four, yeah, pumpkin pie would be right there. And then number five, you know what? It's pie. How could you go wrong with a pie? Ah, yes, yes. Uh, this we opened a whole can of worms here with things we're going to count down. I mean, we could literally turn this into a podcast that only counts things down for the entire length of the episode. Um, maybe Top five. We'll have... Adam is left at a hotel. Let's go. <laughs> well, we know what number one and two are. Any? What are we going to go on next? Anyways, we'll get to the countdown later on at the end of the show. That's definitely going to be the main event for today. But, uh, yeah, Alouettes have a new owner in place. You know, hopefully this brings some stability. Hopefully it lasts longer this time because this is a franchise for the past decade that has been, a well, decade or more has been, you know, ever since Anthony Calvillo retired, seemingly at every spot in the organization going through constant turnover. So, uh, I think this brings some stability there and uh, interesting to see how, how it plays out with things as well. The other thing I want to touch on that uh, as part of this whole Montreal ownership situation is it blew up CFL Twitter this week when uh, TSN aired its, uh, its you know sports center coverage of this 21 minutes into the broadcast, which some folks saying that uh, you know that is the, the league's main you know the league is the driver the TSN is the driver in the media coverage of this league and, and should be putting more of a focal point on it others disagreeing in that regard interesting to know where you guys stand what was it fitting to to you know have it that far in the program i think it was you know some nfl well the nfl first overall pick got traded um, there was some NBA highlights, some NHL stuff I want to say in there as well. Bob Irving from uh, CJOV had a great tweet about it. But uh, what do you guys think, Adam? Uh, do you should should as the league's official broadcast partner? Do you do you think the CFL should be at at the top of the charts on Sports Center? Well, but here's the thing: you can remember that also Bell Media is the exclu- pretty much almost the exclusive partner for NFL in a way in Canada, correct? Uh, they aren't for NHL, I get that. And they are for MLB. That's that's Rogers, and that's a different story for another day. Uh, and NBA, and TSN and Rogers have a split, a split deal on that. So what's in the market right now? NBA, it's NHL, which is current news. Everybody wants to talk about the NHL. It's getting close to playoff time. And... In that case, that's what you got to talk about. There's been exciting things happening in the NFL. Uh, we're still on uh, right now, I believe. We're still on Aaron Rodgers' watch. Yeah, uh, I don't like having to talk about the NFL, but it's the big drawer. Uh, to me, if this was a regional sports network, so again, if this is RDS, it should be the Canadians. It should be the uh, – uh, if there was a NFL team or an NA, like or MLB team in Montreal, fine. But it should have been the Canadians and then the Alouettes because that's huge news in Montreal. Is it such a huge news in Saskatchewan that the Montreal Alouettes have a new owner? I guarantee if I went down to Regina in the streets right now, they would have no clue who the new owner is of the Montreal Alouettes. But they sure worry about how many goals Connor McDavid got against Austin Matthews and the Toronto Maple Leafs. I can tell you that. So... I see why they did what they had to do. DSN is a sports network. It's not the CFL network. It's the sports network. Uh, sometimes we call it the Toronto Sports Network, and I know why. And you know what? They Do they do a good job of just covering Toronto stuff? Well, the Leafs, they do a great job of covering. The team above my head here, they sure don't do a great job of covering. But you know what? Uh, to me, 
it's not the right time of year. And anytime you get a new owner of a new team, do they ever announce a new owner of a new team when uh, when the NHL sells a team and move? Or if they move them, yes. But if they just have a regular team and it's sold to a new owner and it's going to stay there, it's not as big of a highlight as probably a goal scored by Austin Matthews or by uh, by somebody else. Right, Trey? Depends on the team. You know, it depends on the situation. And NFL getting talked about because we all know Washington team is up for sale. And that's maybe the most talked about sell ever of a team other than Ryan Reynolds buying the Senators, right? Those are the two most talked about. But I, I have to say, I enjoy. I don't always agree with Bob Irving, but I enjoy following him on Twitter because between the CFL, he also loves to complain about the Live Golf Tour. And those are the two things in his retirement he complains about all day. And I wish that I can retire one day and just tweet about complaining about golf in the CFL. Like that's my treat dream retirement right there at a racetrack. I'm sitting at a racetrack, just tweeting about all that stuff. I just, I just wish we had a broadcaster who was <laughs> currently here that complains about everything. That's fair too. I mean, Bob has nothing to do right now. You take him. I don't care. Get him off of Twitter. But um, I, I think my thing about him is he's one of those CFL purists, right? Where it, it's CFL first, CFL first. And I think, God God bless him. God bless him and everything he's done, but he's wrong for being, I think, CFL purist. The NFL offseason outrates, it's the first thing on ESPN every day, offseason or not. It's the first thing, NFL. Even if NBA's in the playoffs, even if MLB's in the playoffs, even if, Hockey play well, hockey gets. Did you see what they ESPN doesn't even know hockey, right? Um, <laughs> Stephen A and the gang don't know nothing about hockey. So, my point is, it's of course it's going to rate more. More people are interested in the first round draft pick of the NFL than would have been the, if it was the Grey Cup. Like, you know what I mean? It's just unfortunately how it almost is, right? Like, the NFL is going to get priority. I could see the NFL even maybe having something in their contract that we need to be first because that's the NFL to me. They're first but other than that it's great it's great the other thing you got to remember about bob irving is for a long time there what did winnipeg have the bombers they didn't have the jets for a while they didn't have they don't have any nba mlb team they don't have any nba team oh those gold eyes are pretty good though those gold eyes are pretty good the gold eyes are like what four-time defending champs in the last five years fair point (laughs) tell me when they actually hit the majors anyways (laughs) uh but seriously it, they didn't have the Jets for a long, long time in Winnipeg, and that was the only thing was the Bombers. So guaranteed, when you went on TSN 1290, was it? I think it was for Winnipeg. Uh, that was the first thing they talked about, the Bombers, because that's all they had to talk about was the Bombers. It's like Saskatchewan. We talk about the riders at nauseum during the offseason, even though we probably shouldn't. Now we have the rush at least to somewhat talk about, but even at end, uh ML, uh, what do you call our uh, National Lacrosse League? And NLL really doesn't register on the radar, even on anybody's radar, really. But uh, some people really do enjoy it, and those that do, good on you. But in this case, the CFL is just like that NLL team. Uh, now it's it's not talked about much in the majors. I wonder too. I someone I saw this on Twitter. Sorry, Ryan, but I wonder how the Scotties and the Briar ratings compare to the cfl too because i was wondering i know it's only two weeks but i was wondering someone made that point and that's very interesting because the briar's 95 years old as well it's just as old as the great cup right so and it's pretty institutional especially in western canada i think so i was just curious about if you guys ever saw any of those i didn't no i was just curious someone 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 tweeted that that cfl attendance Twitter account. I thought someone commented, "Do you know what the Scotties were or something, or the Briar was?" Because I, you know what I mean. That was also going on to the week of all this announcement, right? And did, where, where was the Scotties highlights or the? I mean, the Briar highlights and that all too, right? You know, it's a weird time of year. The Briar's on. That's probably going to trump CFL. NHL might trump trump CFL. NFL is always going to trump everything, right? If we're playing yeah. euchre, it's the trump card every time. Yeah, and for me, you know, I, I see kind of all of the different sides of this I, i'm it's frustrating as a cfl fan to see the cfl not get more mainstream media coverage i think that's something we would all agree would we love to see it be the number one thing kicking off sports coverage heck yeah we would that would be awesome to see as a cfl fan but at the same time you know you have to look at it and see 
from TSN's sort of point of view, you're trying to get as many people tuning in and to Sports Center as possible. And so you're going to put the things that, you know, more people across the country, across the, you know, North America are going to tune in and want to watch. And like you said, that that's, you know, these other big items. It's the NFL. That's, that's you know, McDavid. It's Matthews. It's all of that stuff there. That is the real focal point for a lot of this stuff. So, uh, I, I I see both sides of, of that standpoint. I'd love to see more mainstream coverage of the CFL. I'd love to see TSN fully enhance its broadcast, you know, its on-field game day experience, or I guess on TV game day experience, you know, refresh the, the UI, refresh the look of their broadcast and stuff, because there's a lot they can do. You know, genius sports, if you're ever ready to do something about that, let's talk. Um, probably not to me. You probably don't want to talk to me. Um, but at the same time, yeah, they are the only rights holders, you know, they have other priorities that are going to bring in the money. And that's the main focus of a TV network is to bring in the money. So I understand that aspect of it as well. Um, and you know, Adam, I think you just sent this to us in our private chat. If it was up to us, there would be a CFL network. I mean, look, I, I, we did an eight hour show for CFL free agency day. If I had no other priorities and had all of my time and money to dedicate to it, I would love to do this 24 seven. I would love to just talk about the CFL, have a nonstop, maybe sleep occasionally in there like two hours a day. Um, but you know, that's not feasible and it's a small league. I don't think you can cover that 24 seven necessarily. There's not enough new news every day, unless we want to get really deep into top five countdowns to talk about every single day. But you got to remember the NFL network is not just all NFL 24 seven news. It's old game highlights or it's old games. They've got uh, archives, top 10 things. You know, like you've just said, uh, they actually show the top 10 stats or something. They show, all sorts of cool stuff that's not just NFL related. So, or not just NFL news and where Aaron Rodgers is going today. Uh, they show everything and anything. So to me, it'd be cool to have like one hour of news and then have a three hour, one of the old gray cups, except for 2009. Uh, and then it would be great to have any other ones, uh, have some classic games, have some top 10 shows, like those half hour ones that TSN produces. It'd be cool to have like a little CFL network and then go from there like that, I would think. I think if you coupled it with CIS, you'd have a lot, especially you'd have a lot of stuff. And and if like if we actually paid attention to the draft like the NFL does, that gives two or three weeks of stuff. So yeah. Yeah, no, that's an excellent point. If somebody else if somebody wants to throw the money at it and make this happen, hey, you've got a viewer in me. Uh, there you go. That's one that's worth the, that's worth all the money investment alone. Right. Uh, let's move on to our next topic here though. And, uh, you know, we talked about one ownership group in place, another potentially coming down the pipe here as uh, it, guys, we thought it was dead. We thought COVID killed the CFL expansion dream. Could it be possibly back on, uh, you know, Randy Ambrosi in interviews this week said that is a focus point of the CFL on bringing the expansion back to Halifax. There's been talk about it, the stadium situation there over in Halifax. Uh, you know, what was it? A pop-up stadium for now, not a full brand new stadium for the, the team. Uh, Trey, what do you think? Uh, I know you've talked a lot about wanting to get that 10th team here in the CFL. Do you think there is potential? We do actually get this Atlantic expansion. You have to remember, though, when Randy Ambrosi says things, he also said the Bomber Grey Cups on a Monday. He gave the wrong date. When, <laughs> he gave the Monday or whatever. He said the 17th. But, yeah, it, and he's already announced this team, what, like twice at least uh, before COVID or once at least for sure before COVID. So, but he did kind of put a timeline, I thought I saw somewhere, that he said something about 25, 26. They're hoping to move the – he made some cryptic comment where, like, we're planning on moving the season up because the 10th team will uh, help with that or something. And he said something about 25, 26 season. So kind of being cryptic, kind of still leaving it out there, but nothing confirmed. I think the pop-up stadium is probably a great idea. Get your team out there. See what you have. You know, build from there. Um 
but I think I just I think you need to have somewhat of a commitment from a potential ownership perspective and stadium before going into that because what how stupid is it going to look if the schooners just end up like the 95 96 american expansion you know what i mean like we, we see the schooners get to play two uh one season and that's it you know they're the manatees now or the posse right that, that, that you don't want to see that so i think that would help and i think you know, talking about the Great Cup, which is coming up later, I think. But, you know, seems like the schedule's moving up a little bit, even for that Great Cup. Uh, I think it was a week or two earlier than normal. So, and, and Ambrosi says the 10th team is to help out with that, get rid of that buy, balance the schedule, all that stuff. You know, I can't wait for it to happen. 10, five games a week's a lot better to bet on, too, boys. Five game parlays is a lot better than four, right? So, and, and if there's a team on a buy, you have two teams on a buy. You still have four games, right? There's none of this two or three games a week. You, you, you're 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 setting its long term success. Chris is bringing Chris is asking about the video game. I'm sure a tenth team makes a video game a lot easier. It opens up a new market potentially, right? So all good things, right, Adam? Absolutely, it all is really good things, and I love the idea of the temporary stadium. We've seen it work in BC with Empire Stadium there for that one season when BC Place was getting renovated. It was a great success there, and it had twenty some thousand seats, I believe, and it was just a fun old setup. So a temporary stadium makes sense at this point. Uh, St. Mary's, the university there in Halifax, would get a little bit of extra seating out of it, and the big thing that I could see is. Halifax is a sports market. Did you see the World Juniors? They were packed. They were singing Evil Way like there is no tomorrow. Did you see that last week, the uh, uh, t- final eights for the uh, college basketball for the U Sports? That place was packed and it broke an attendance record at 40,000 people in it, which is utterly amazing. So to me, Halifax is a perfect place to do it. It's the fact now like you're right Trey we need to have good ownership in there you need somebody like the Ontario or Ottawa Sports and Entertainment Group like Ottawa did when they got the Red Blacks back and Jeff Hunt ended up uh, leading that you need a good ownership group to go in there take control of this and say okay here's what we're going to do we're not going to charge the taxpayer a pile of money because I think that's the biggest thing in Halifax and in uh in the in Atlantic region they don't like paying taxes nobody likes paying taxes and especially on things that are just for recreation, that makes it even tougher. Now, if you said that an NHL franchise wanted to come to Halifax, the money would be all over it, I would think, because, you know, we might get our two boys back. But I don't think that's the case in this one. The the, the guys, like they, they do like their football out there. Uh, they've been selling out at, uh, Touchdown Atlantic. I know they did last year. This year, I think it's a few even less seats, so they really will have to – uh, it is priority seating. I know there was a pre-sale that went out for Saskatchewan here a little while ago. Uh, but to me, this is makes a total, like it makes total sense to have a team in Atlantic Canada already. You've got Montreal not far away. You can have a good rivalry for Labor Day weekend. You've get an extra set of eyes that they don't get to look at anything else that's professional other than again, and uh, lacrosse or uh, AHL teams. I mean, you got a team like, uh, like I said, in Atlantic, you're going to get all the provinces coming out to Atlantic Canada. You're going to get travelers. You're going to get a little bit more tourism. It's a win-win in my case. And of course, there's lobster, lots and lots and lots of lobster. So you, you, you got to do the coast to coast bowl, I think, for Labor Day, right? Oh, yeah, got to do the BC half because Ottawa, Montreal, and then you got to do the coast to coast bowl, bowl, I think. But On BC. BC is always the team that seemingly left out on Labor Day, right? Like they don't really have a rival in place there for it. So yeah, I'm all over that uh, as well. And, you know, uh, the East Coast is a huge travel destination as well, right? Like that is a major travel destination in Canada and it's going to draw people in. Like you said, those touchdown Atlantic games draw people in seemingly pretty well. Uh, If you... You know, were to tell me, okay, I have the option of going going to see the Bombers play one road game here in an upcoming season. I could go anywhere in Canada and make it part of a trip. Yeah, Atlanta, Canada would probably be up there. You know, I've never been to the East Coast. I'd love to go see it for the experience there alone. Also seeing a game in a new stadium, you know, a brand new team and just seeing what kind of atmosphere they have there. Yeah, that's intriguing to me. So I think you're going to get a lot of people locally and I think you're going to get a lot of people coming on road games. So if they can get the ball rolling here, 
with the Atlantic. I think it's going to be a success, which leads me to, you know, this whole temporary stadium thing leads me to wonder, what do you guys think? Do you think if this is a success with this model, do we see other expansion for the CFL in the near future to other cities? I don't think you expand to 11. I don't think you're going to go straight to 11 without a plan for going to 12 because then you're back in the whole weird scheduling situation again, though. But we look at other places, you know, there was a lot of talk with the new Montreal ownership of, well, are they going to try to move the team to Quebec City or play half of the games there? Like, do we end up in a case where there's a, a, you know, a team in Quebec City, maybe a team in Saskatoon, somewhere like that? Can you can you uh, potentially expand, play in these smaller stadiums for a bit, and then you know look at the opportunity for others if this one's successful? Or do you guys think we're going to be pretty much locked in at ten teams if we get there, Trey? Mm, I think we're stuck at ten. I know there's a lot of people that say like. Chris says Vancouver Island. I've heard that one. I've heard Quebec. I've heard Saskatoon. Oh, but I think we're stuck at 10 for the, and it, the CFL, I think, needs to really, I think we need to be selling out like almost, you know what I mean? Like every game for that, especially in those cities that we're talking about. I know Saskatchewan's closer. They're pretty full. But are you really going to take Rough Rider fans away? You know, to get them to Saskatchewan, are you really wanting to take BC fans away and put them on Vic- Victoria Island or Vancouver Island? Do you really want to take Alouette fans away? You know what I mean? Like, because that's my biggest thing about like I think about the Nordiques coming back. Would they even cut? Could they come back? Probably not, because you're taking away Canadian. You know what I mean? Like, I'm sure there's some holdouts, but and same with the Expos and how the Blue Jays have done it. I just think it's really tough to try to come into a market and muscle your way in. I think expansion has to come like outside the box like a place like we see we say st we're going to talk american we see what st louis is doing in the xfl they should get an expansion nfl team if they ever do that obviously right i don't think we have anywhere else in canada without drastically taking it away but i like i like everything about the maritimes you have four i think you should as long as you market it all four like the whole maritimes i think you're great they're passionate out there uh, like I, I work, a, there's a lot of horse racing out there and they are gung ho for it. And at, at Adam's point, they don't like paying tax dollars because they're gung ho about their tracks, but some are getting threatened to close down because of tax dollars. Right. So I can only imagine that, that they don't even work on that stuff that's established there. I can only imagine what's going to be like to build a new stadium, but I would love for 12 or 14 one day, but where would you put them at? You know, you look at this and I, I'll tell you right now, Saskatchewan will get an AHL team and a new rink in either Regina or Saskatoon before they're going to get another CFL team. Uh, Because both of those cities, for some reason right now, are racing each other to see who could build a 10,000-plus seat stadium. I don't get the plan there in Regina or Saskatoon, but okay. Anyways, uh, no, you know what? Right at the moment, we got to stick with 10 teams. That being said, there are potential for more teams uh, but you got to be a little bit more creative and outside the box. CFL expansion didn't work in the nineties because they went to teams that already had NFL affiliates, almost sort of right. Miami, they had an NFL team in there. Uh, Sacramento, they had NFL teams nearby. Uh, you look at other teams in there as well. Memphis, uh, there was t- uh, Tennessee had their Titans already at that point. It was a bad situation for the CFL to go and try to compete directly against the NFL. That being said, if you look at some other places in the in the uh, in the U.S., take a look at Billings, Montana. Take a look at North Dakota. Uh, take a look at South Dakota. Maybe have a team between the two of them. Uh, Wyoming doesn't have a team. Those are those flyover states that maybe some people don't care about, but they love football out there. I'll tell you that much. Anybody? St. Louis. St. Louis. St. Louis as well. <laughs> they I, know little, yeah. I know it's a little south, but like they're getting what thirty some thousand for an XFL game. Like there's no, re- there's no there's oh. no reason they deserve an NFL team. There's no reason the CFL team couldn't go in there either. Fair enough, but I predict eventually the NFL is going to say, you know what, right. let's mess with the XFL it, and we're going to throw a team in there. It'll be Baltimore 2.0 for sure, right? Like, Absolutely. yeah, but it's going to be. But you know what? To me, I think like you look at this and yeah, there may be some teams that would have a, maybe an argument. I think London or Northern Ontario, somewhere up there may have an argument for a team. Be very tough to get them into in and out of there because of the airport system situations. I mean, you go and have a team in Thunder Bay or in uh, 
Kenor or somewhere up there, it'd be pretty tough to get him in and out. But I think it would be good for uh, good football, and there'd be a good market for it. They'd be passionate about it for sure. But uh, no, I think what you need to do is you've got to get the tenth team established, well established, and then you got to put two in if you're going to do it. But I don't see where in the Canada right now that that would fit. But I could see a I could see an argument for some of those northern U.S. team uh, places. Yeah, I'd, I would love to see uh, more expansion. I wouldn't want them to go too far, uh, right? I, that's a big thing I love about the CFL is just that it's a niche, small league, uh, you know, where I can I can watch every game in a weekend is, is part of the big things I love about the CFL. But, hey, if it's successful, there are more rooms for expansion. They can do it right, then, uh, then sure, go for it. You know, 12 teams, 14 teams, that's still a good-sized league to me, but uh, – Kind of, you know, a lot of the things you guys talked about already would have to be the right situation and the right place. And you wouldn't want to take viewers, you know, it's not helping the league grow if it's just taking fans from one market and locating them to another. It's just spending money for the purpose of rearranging things, which doesn't really get you too far in the grand scheme of growing the league. No, I think if Quebec, see, my thing about Quebec City, I thought the owner was more from Quebec City than Montreal. That's what I thought. So if he wanted to own a CFL team and there was rumors of Quebec getting expansion, why wouldn't he have just waited for that? You know what I mean? Like to me, that that would have been probably better. You know, like well, you could start from the ground up your whole way. So I don't think I don't know. I think this I think we're tapped out in Canada unless we like buy Trinidad Trinidad and Tobago, like that rumor was a few years ago or whatever it was. Like, wasn't there a couple of those countries down there that want to join Canada? Fine. Put a team down there. And that's basically just an extra bye week, right? You sign on the beach and do whatever you want. But other than that, I think we're tapped out. Hey, the global glo- or a CFL 2.0, do we end up with a global division where you have a team based in, you know, a team based in Japan, team based in Mexico, team based in Ireland? I think we've seen players come, Germany. Well, that's, I think that's NFL's next 10 year plan is to have a division outside of America. That would make the most sense. And, I think four team, four extra teams in America, four extra teams somewhere else. I think is like their next twenty year plan from the sounds of it, and it would be great if the CFL, if, if the NFL can do it, CFL can do it. Like, it's money though; those flights would not be cheap, <laughs> and the time zones and everything. Yeah, else. the time that zones gets tough. I mean, yeah, you New York, York LA is all the time already. I mean, well, fair enough, but I mean, like, could you imagine the CFL going to Japan to play Tokyo? I mean. That'd be cool if you're a wrestler. I don't know if that's as cool if you're a CFL player. Think of the, it's not just the players though. It's also the logistics. It's load the equipment up. It's load all the gear. It's load all the things that you need to play a football game. It's the communication devices. It's, it's just too much. Uh, I could see it staying on North America for a CFL, but it ain't, it ain't jumping an ocean anytime soon. That, that's why those bigger leagues, they usually only do like one or two games somewhere because it's it gets the market out. But like now the NFL is trying hard to get into London. So that's why they do 10 games a year, it seems like there. But anyway. Hey, if I if I could, you know, have CFL on all the time with the time zones, you know, back in, you know, a couple Olympics ago, uh, I, I was watching curling at two in the morning while, while doing homework while still in university. And it was great. It was a great time. I was exhausted by the end of it. But, you know, if I can if I can wake up when my child wakes me up in the middle of the night and turn on a CFL game and catch the third quarter at like three in the morning, why not? I'm all for it. Yeah, probably auto logistical issues like you mentioned, Adam, that prevent this from happening. But hey, a guy can dream. Uh, let's move. Think about you. You'll be close if the schooners get a team because they could start. You know, ten o'clock our time, which is like afternoon there, right? And then you could have ten to ten football on Saturday. Oh yeah, then you do the quadruple header, the four yeah. games in one day. Let's do it. Twelve straight hours of CFL football. <laughs> TSL, uh, please no. <laughs> <laughs> hey, we wanted more coverage. Uh, <laughs> let's move on to our next topic here. Then uh, we touched on it uh, briefly before, but Winnipeg named the host of the 2025 Grey Cup. We know 2023 is in Hamilton. BC gets 2024. It's coming to Winnipeg in 2025 for the first time in 10 years. 2015 was the one before that. Uh, Trey, how pumped are you to have a great cup coming here this uh, in a couple of years? 
pretty happy because I don't remember the last one, boys. (laughs) (laughs) Hit the rum a little too much at halftime because Fallout Boy was killing my ears. So I hope I remember a little bit more of this one. But other than that, and I hope the Bombers are actually in it. Uh, But other than that, pretty hyped. Um, Yeah, and just if the Rough Riders are in it, I'm not selling my tickets to anybody because they made it hard for Bomber fans this last year, right? No, I'm just kidding, Adam. (laughs) Adam, you're the exception. You're the exception. I'll get you a ticket, but anyone else, right? You know, you gotta gotta earn it. I'm a Marcos fan right now. Don't you see the hat? <laughs> Anyways, uh, no, you know what? It's great uh, that the Bombers are going to get the Grey Cup again. All I can do is recommend one thing. Make sure you're wearing about 15 layers of thermal underwear because it's going to be a cold Grey Cup once more in Bomberland. If they get the home uh, field advantage, I mean, who's betting against Winnipeg if they actually get into that Grey Cup as the home team? Yeah, you know that. The last Grey Cup that was here back in 2015 is the only Grey Cup I've actually ever been to. I uh, had some friends give me some tickets for that, which I was very thankful for. Um, and Mike and I actually went to that one together, and it was cold. I think it is the coldest football game I've ever sat through. Maybe the West Final, like two years ago, was uh, was pretty bad there as well. The but December was, one was awful. Yeah, but it was it was. It was freezing cold, and I think that was late November. Now it's, what, November 16th, 2025, they're announcing it. So mid-November, I mean, global warming is unfortunately a thing that's happening, so you never know. It might be in the positive degrees by then. I I hope that's not the case. (laughs) I think Saskatchewan's was this year in the positives, or just right around the positives. My skin didn't go blue, boys, in my shorts, so I think we were fine. He just um, but but yeah, very excited to have the Grey Cup here uh, in 2025. Uh, and fitting, it's also the 10 year anniversary of this podcast. Mike and I started podcasting about the CFL together, I believe, back in 2015. Oh, maybe it's 2014. Maybe I will say 2015. That seems about right. Uh, something like that. We had a name change somewhere along the way as well. Uh, but uh, yeah, 10 year anniversary of the podcast. You know, last Grey Cup, we really didn't do very many podcast-related events. I'm not going to promise anything two years in advance, but uh, hopefully, you know, if we continue on this ride well until then, we can do big things here uh, with, uh, you know, Mike, Trey, and myself are all based in Winnipeg. Adam's just a short drive down the road uh, from out west, and uh, we'll, we'll have to find a way to bring you in here to, to do some fun things for Grey Cup week that week. I'm very excited pick couch, about it. Pick a couch. I got two of them right here. You can have either which one, but my kids will probably wake you up in the morning, man. That's yeah, that's all right. I think we should just uh, throw the party, though, at his uh, place, uh, Ryan. That way there we got Trey's world. Perfect. No, you don't need to see that, man. Like, no. <laughs> it's like the first time that people come and see Jurassic Park, you know, just like, what is that? That's my house probably, man. <laughs> Now, the, the interesting thing uh, with hosting the Grey Cup in 2025 for me also is we've talked a lot about when will the Bombers decline from the run they're on. And although that's been a big topic on your mind in regards to the Bombers tray. And, and 2025, we're looking at three seasons from now. Also happens to be the final season on Zach Caleros' contract with the Bombers uh, there as well. So... What are we thinking? Do we think the Bombers can, you know, maintain the run uh, long enough to to get into the home Grey Cup game in 2025? Or uh, or are we looking at this team's probably, you know, going to have its work cut out for it to make it there? I'll go to you first, Trey. Me? Okay. I, was about, I thought you were wording this up to me, but I was like, ah. Uh... If they keep pan guys under the table, they should be fine, right? You would think, you know, <laughs> they keep that game plan up. But I think I think that this is a year too late. I think if they got the 24 one like they were trying to get before, or I thought they were in late contention, maybe. That's BC, right? No. Yeah. Yeah, BC. Um, maybe I'd be more confident. Because you have to remember, like, there's no way in heck – Caleros, Jefferson, Big Hill, Stanley Bryant, uh, Yoshi, all those, none of those guys are going to be on the team in 26. Like, they all won't be like, sure, Caleros' contract's till then, but 
but I don't know if he'll be on the team, you know, and same with Jefferson and Big Hill. Big Hill might be in the stands, you know, because he lives in Winnipeg, but that's as close as the field he's probably getting that year. So the team's going to be vastly different. Well, I feel like the when teams go on a run, they go for a while. You give them a decade. If you look at like Mon- the Al- Al- Calvillo's Montreal and Bo Levi and Calgary, do you give them a decade or a little less? It depends to me on on what the management team does, right? If, yeah. So if, if, sorry, if they follow that kind of same thing, I I think they'll be competitive. It'll just be a different team. Adam. Well, didn't Nick Dembski and uh, Willie Jefferson say today that they'll be in the 2025 Grey Cup with Winnipeg? Did they? Oh, okay. uh, it, was, it, was Brady, it was Brady Oliveira. Oh, Brady Oliveira. Oh, okay. yeah, right. hey, he's like he's like younger than me. He okay. could be here, but okay. Well, Willie yeah. Jefferson. Come did on, he say that? we all know. Yeah, Willie Jefferson did, according to John Hodge from Three Down Nation. He better be coaching. Like that's what he <laughs> better be meaning, man. Like, <laughs> nevertheless, I'll tell you right now, if Winnipeg is. Uh, continuing to rebuild and retool and they could do it right. They have a good chance of making the great cup uh, in their own home barn. However, that's a pretty tall order to ask. I think it could be even like Richard said, uh, just like my Saskatchewan Rough Riders this year, the Bombers might miss the playoffs the year they host, but Hey, you know what? I'm sure they're going to put that all in. It doesn't take long to rebuild in this TFL. If it is a year or two years, I don't see it being, and you know that Winnipeg is going to stock up. They want to, ho- they want to win a Grey Cup at their own home barn, just so they can be like their big brothers over to the west. For me, I, I mean, they've got a couple of years if they do it correctly, and that's the big thing, right? Is you start replacing some of those pieces each year in preparation for getting the pieces in place. Uh, as a Tampa Bay Lightning fan, you know. You follow that model. You 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 don't put you know you spend you know, cap circumvention. Yeah, there we go. I made the joke so nobody else has to. Um, but what they have effectively done, gone to the f- finals three straight seasons, and their Stanley Cup window. I know they're in a bit of a slump right now in the regular season, but their you know competing window is still open for another three four years based on the contracts, and that's because as guys have asked for raises, as guys have aged and you know gone out. Uh, you know, they've replaced them uh, with pieces with younger pieces that are mainstays for year to come. They've built one of the deadliest third lines in hockey for, you know, different variation, it seems, every single season. And I think that's a model that a team like Winnipeg, and if Kyle Walters sticks around as general manager, could potentially do something similar where, yeah, we're going to start seeing some of these bigger names, you know, guys like on the offensive line, I think are going to, you know, after this season, I'm surprised they brought them all back for the most part, but maybe we see a couple of them come in and out, but you still have some mainstays, a bit of old, bit of new, uh, keep the run going. That's how Calgary, I think, manages to do, has managed to do it for as many years as they can. But I do wonder the same thing as you guys. You know, Zach Caleros, three years from now, another three years older, if that offensive line isn't at the quality it has been, you know, can he still play at the top of his ability? I'm not so sure. I'm I'm not going to go put the money down on Winnipeg making the Grey Cup in 2025 now, as much as I would love to see it. I wonder what the odds are right now. I don't think they exist. I wish they did. Can I, can I bet on, like, the Grey Cup winner in, like, 10 years, Trey? Is that a thing? Uh, you, I'm sure if you crawl the darkest, deepest, most degenerate parts of the interweb, yeah. But not on main. I, it's not on cool bet. They have this year's on cool bet. That's it. But, I mean, hey, if it's bettable, there's someone out there that'll take your money, man. Like, <laughs> I'm sure if you go up to some people from the Russian Federation, I'm sure they probably would. For yeah. You. yeah. And the All way right. you were talking about those lightning, that sounds like Mike talking about the Jets, man. You just <laughs> so yeah. Except I, except my team has a track record to prove. Yeah, no, I know. I so. I just gotta throw I gotta throw a shot in at the Jets anytime because Mike, where where is Mike? Mike can't even show his face on a show because you where know, he where, where are the Jets again? I can't see them from way underneath me. Oh yeah, they're way down there. Yeah, let's not talk about that team. Um... <laughs> We talk about the other Jets if they land Aaron Rodgers, keep it football at least, but that's about it. And like every other free oh, agent out we, there. What, what other what other quarterbacks on the Jets, Adam? I, my number I, one quarterback that I got told I can't put on my top five. Actually, right. I'd be la- I would laugh if he actually wins the starting job over Aaron Rodgers. <laughs> Stop it. That would be too good. 
Aaron Rodgers would go on an extended darkness retreat if that happened. Um, anyway, probably let's... end up in green and white, but probably somewhere else. <laughs> oh, don't say that. I can handle Brady. Okay, I could handle Brady if he came up here. I would not watch a single Aaron Rodgers CFL game. Don't even joke about that. Like, <laughs> he, he did say at one time that he uh, had friends in Edmonton. I'm just saying. Well, he did have the he had the Canadian tuxedo when he came up here not to play that terrible preseason game, right? So he'd fit in fine. All right, let's get into <laughs> the segment we've all been waiting for. Uh, okay. We've stalled for 50 minutes to give each of us time to lock in our top five quarterbacks. We're going each of us in a new segment here called the countdown. We're going to be counting down our top five quarterbacks currently in the CFL. The three of us have each made our list. Maybe we haven't finalized it yet, but now's the time to do so. Mike sent me his list earlier as well. So we'll get his picks here also. And the beauty of this is the criteria is entirely up to you within reason. Uh, If you can make a good justification for it, we'll allow it. Um, you know, everybody could critique who the top five is uh, for different reasons here. We're going to start at number five, each go through, give our number five, then we'll go to four, then we'll go upwards from there. Uh, Trey, this was your idea, so you get the joys of starting us off here. Who is your number five quarterback in the CFL? Oh, man, I'm going to go with... Oh, wait, sorry. I just got it. I, I have my list here. I lost it. Um, Vernon Adams. I'm going to go with Vernon Adams, number five. Um, I think I think he – I think the new th- uh, the new team is going to help him. I think – I know he kind of back – or he played – I think he did fine in BC, got out of Montreal. I think he's a lot more talented than people think. I just think he doesn't hasn't had the team around him. Get him full-time in the West. He's number five. Go ahead, hey. Ryan. No, I, I think you can go next. You go next year, Adam. Well, with my number five pick, I'm going to go from the Montreal Alouettes, Cody Fajardo. Uh, here's my reasoning is because he's finally got an offensive line that maybe will keep him upright, sort of, kind of. Uh, he seems motivated. He seems like he has a little bit of a chip on his shoulder for how things went in Saskatchewan last year. He's got a familiar coach in with him, which might be a good or a bad thing. I don't know which way to look at that one. But I think if he's on his game, he's still one of the best quarterbacks in this league. It's very, very tough to go and say that uh, Cody Fajardo is a bad quarterback. I, I believe he's a good quarterback. I just think that he had one bad season or really a season and a half that was pretty bad with a bad offensive line. And I think if he had the right offensive line and the right pieces around him, he's a very good quarterback. And I think he's got some of those pieces in Montreal. So he gets number five. I'm, I'm happy you went first because I can just say ditto because Cody Fajardo comes in at number five on my list here as well for a lot of the same reasons. Just last season, he was my first round pick in our preseason fantasy draft, I believe. First or second, I forget uh uh, I had back to back picks, so it doesn't really matter. But, uh, you know, because I believed he was an MOP quality quarterback coming into last season, and obviously it didn't work out. Very few things did work out in Saskatchewan, and he had no help from his offensive line there. Uh, things I like from Fajardo, uh, you know, he does have some big playability. He does have the ability to scramble and use his legs when he needs to. So, uh, You know, most of my rankings will give some insight here at the start. I'm not looking at it as who's currently at this very moment a top five quarterback in the CFL. I look at it at who do I see being top five by the end of this upcoming season. So I'm looking at the opportunities for these guys coming into this season as well. And I think fresh start for Fajardo, you know, is going to help him mentally here. I know it's still with Jason Moss again, but, uh, you know, uh, give me Fajardo in Montreal as my number five quarterback on the list. Uh, and split it 2-2 across the board. Mike is agreeing with Trey and going with Vernon Adams Jr. as his number five quarterback. There. Where's the bell? Another me and Mike agreeing for once. Let's go. <laughs> now probably the next four are going to be different. Yeah, at number four here, let's go back to you, Adam. Uh, yeah, we'll we'll switch up the order as we go through everything. Can I just can I just can I just say real quick? I want to say it hurt my heart. I don't have Fajardo in my top five. 
it hurt my heart. But just since we're talking about him and he's not going to be talked about, he's my honorable mention. If I had to do a 5B, I couldn't put him in. I just could. But anyway, add him to you. With the number four pick uh, in the uh, CFL uh, countdown list, uh, the countdown list, I'm going to actually go with kind of a guy that's off the board. And for the same reasons why Ryan is going off this board a little bit sometimes, I think, as well. It'll be Ottawa Red Red Blacks quarterback Jeremiah Mazzoli. I think last year he was going to lead that team to a playoff spot or even more uh, the way he was going. He's a very smart quarterback. He's a little bit elusive in the pocket, and I think he's got some more pieces around him to help him out, especially in the receiving core this year. So to me, he's a good player, and I think that he just kind of had a rough uh, shake of things, especially when you have a fool from Saskatchewan that wanted to tackle him the way he did and end his season. So to me, now that he's back and healthy, give me Jeremiah Mazzoli. I'll go next. I'll go next. I took Schmo Levi Mitchell at number four. Um, I think he's going to have a bounce back year in Hamilton, especially if they figure out what running the ball means in the Eastern Division, or at least Hamilton and Montreal. But I think Bo is number four. I think he'll. I think he won't be old Bo. Like I mean, like old style Bo. But he'll be like. I think he'll find a way to nickel and dime, kind of like we've seen Brady do with some of those older quarterbacks in the NFL. He'll. He'll make the plays. He'll do his check downs. I think he just had a bad goal of it in Calgary, and Calgary was ready for the the next guy up. Ryan? Uh, well, I'll go to Mike's pick here next, and uh, I think uh, I think we might have to accuse you two of copying each other's answers here because Mike is agreeing with you and going with Bo Levi Mitchell at number four. Of course, if you want any of Mike's uh, reasonings, you can hit him up on Twitter at Mike Garrell. But let me We're, gonna, blow we're not this- going to be all the same. I can tell you right now, if me and Mike are exactly the same, I I gotta go. I'm done. Like, there's no way he's gonna be as stupid as me for my top couple picks. And Richard, Richard's putting in there. Caleros shouldn't be number one or for homers. I promise you, buddy's in the top five. But you gotta keep watching, man. Let's keep watching. <laughs> All right, let me blow this top five countdown wide open here with my number four pick that I am gonna guess is not even in the top five for either of you, but I'll be shocked if he is. I'm putting Taylor Cornelius at number four at quarterback for me. Guys, he was eighth in the league in rushing yards last season as a quarterback at over 500 yards rushing. His accuracy wasn't fully there. You know, it was a 57% passing, 11 touchdowns, nine interceptions. It's not fantastic. I'm not going to lie that it's fantastic, but it was a step forward from what we saw from him last year. He was worth a new contract from Chris Jones for that. They're sticking with him as their starter. He's got Eugene Lewis. He's got Stephen Dunbar. He's got all of those guys. What Kyron Moore, I think, coming in there as well. Like the Elks have a top two or three wide receiver core in the CFL this season, which is going to only help Cornelius, you know, advance from what we saw from him last year. So I see him entering top four at quarterback uh, this upcoming season. As we move I, on. I don't know why I'm so nervous. Like, I feel like this is a draft. <laughs> I don't know why. I'm just like, I just don't know why I'm so nervous about this. We, we will on social media post the uh, everybody's list here. And uh, we'll get the fans to vote on who is the, uh, the most accurate and best list. Uh, no stuffing the ballot box. Um... Go, moving on to our top three, I haven't gone first yet, so I can go back to back here and go first. Uh, I've got Vernon Adams Jr. at number three quarterback for me in the CFL. Uh, again, a guy that I truly believe in uh, hasn't gotten the shot that he needs to uh, to you know really succeed. He had what one season where he was the the go to starter happened to be his best season in the CFL. He's also surrounded by a BC wide receiver core that is pretty good uh, and going to be able to, you know, support them there as well. They don't really have a run game either. So it's going to be a ha- passing heavy season, I think for VA this upcoming season and an ability for him to truly show, you know, that he can be a number one quarterback and he's got Dane Evans pushing them behind there. So yeah, another maybe potential off the board pick, but give me VA as my uh, top three quarterback in the CFL. Uh, Trey, let's go back to you here. I'm going to go with the new Saskatchewan Rough Rider quarterback, Trevor Harris, at number three. Um, I, I feel like so obviously there must have been something about him that Montreal picked him 
over VA. And there must obviously be something that Saskatchewan got him instead of everyone else. I mean, I guess they were probably in on Bo, but Harris is in Saskatchewan, right? I'm not making that up. Okay, sorry, I just had a brain fart. I was like, did Harris sign somewhere else? I'm like, oh my god. But no, Harris went there. Um, I'll, I'll, I'll do Harris. I don't, you know, this was, like I said, March Madness was easier than this. Like, and you have to pick like 60 teams down to two. And that was a lot easier. Adam? Well, Richard in the chat was asking here, and he said, uh, so you're saying that Edmonton is a playoff team, Ryan? Well, I'll tell you it this way. I think they are a playoff team. <sighs> And I'm picking a number three, Taylor Cornelius. Wow. Here is my reasoning. I like him a little bit more than the two guys I've just put on there uh, for a couple reasons. One, I like his running back. He's going to take a lot of pressure off of Taylor Cornelius and allow him to focus on the football a lot more. <clears throat> You've listed those pieces like you were talking about. You didn't even list Manny Arsenal, who's right. the guy that can really calm down a young quarterback. And Dylan Mitchell. And Dylan Mitchell. Don't forget about Dylan Mitchell, who's been – just absolutely lighting the league since he came in last year. Uh, so you've got Kevin Brown, you've got Dylan Mitchell, you've got Manny Arsenal, you've got uh, Kyron Moore, who's going to give you a great return every time and probably give Kayla Cornelius a short field. Uh, he is a guy, and I'm really, I'll be honest, I'm scared of the Edmonton offense right now. If they can get a little bit of help on that offensive line, Taylor Cornelius is going to have a great year and he's going to be the third best quarterback in the league. Man, here I thought this was going to be my uh, my crazy pick off the board, and Adam one ups me and puts it one higher on the list. Uh, interesting, interesting. This is fun. I enjoy this. Uh, at number three on his board, Mike has Jake Mayer of the Calgary Stampeders uh, as his number three quarterback. There, uh, Adam. Let's go right back to you here and. Uh, what are we at number? What are we at now? We're at number two, right? Yeah, we're uh, top two quarterbacks in the CFL. Who's number two for you? Oh, uh, number two. I mean, I don't want to look like too much of a homer, of course, of all homers, but Trevor Harris of the Saskatchewan Rough Riders. I think he's going to have a much better offensive lineman in front of him with Godber there, uh, as well as uh, oh, Jason or Philip Blake as well in the offensive line. That helps him a lot. He's got some familiar pieces with Jake Weineke coming over to Saskatchewan. Uh, he's got some veteran pieces to help him out as well uh, with uh, uh, Darrell Walker now coming over to Saskatchewan, which, uh, by the way, I told you all so, and I thought I'd throw that one in. Uh, nevertheless, uh, Trevor Harris was the number two quarterback last year. I mean, he was a very solid pickup for Montreal. They didn't cost him a whole lot, and he had something to prove, and he proved it. He had a great season overall. Uh, to me, he was the second best quarterback in the league. My, if you don't have a guy named Nathan Rourke that was injured for half of it. Otherwise, it's Nathan Rourke and probably Zach Kalaros. But that case, number three. But he was healthy. He stayed healthy. He was a great, great addition to Montreal. I think, like I say, Saskatchewan gives him a little bit more help. Uh, I think they'll be playoff bound too. eventually. Saskatchewan might be in a crossover. It might be just squeaking in. But uh Trevor Harris is going to be a big piece of that. Uh, well, Mike agrees with you. He has Trevor Harris in a, his number two as well. I'll go next and we'll save Trey for last on this one because I think that will be uh, entertaining. Um, for number two for me, I have Jake Mayer of the Calgary Stampeders. I think he was, you know, if you look at uh, completion percentage last season, uh, outside of Nathan Rourke, he was the most accurate passer in the CFL, and he unseated Bo Levi Mitchell, one of the top quarterbacks of the past decade. You know, Jake Mayer didn't do anything super flashy, but in a season where none of the quarterbacks not named Nathan Rourke, and okay, you can argue Zach Caleros, uh, his numbers weren't flashy, really. Um, you know, it was Nathan Rourke was the top quarterback in the CFL by far to me. Jake Mayer, 14 touchdowns, seven interceptions, you know, was about as good as you could ask for from a sophomore quarterback there. I think he, as the starter, has all the opportunities to take a step forward with, uh, you know, an offensive line that was the best in the league last season. So give me Jake Mayer as my number two quarterback in the CFL. Uh, Trey, let's go to you for your number two. Did you did you say Mike? Say Mike's. Mike said Trevor Harris. Uh, Trevor Harris did he? Okay. Zach, Zach Caleros at number two, <clears throat> and I'm not. I don't want to explain anything. I'll I'll explain it when we go to number one. 
All right. All right. Fair enough. Uh, well, we go to number one. I, I think uh, I can go first on this one. I think Adam and I are going to agree here uh, since he hasn't shown up on the list there either. Number one quarterback in the CFL. I put Zach Caleros. I mean, he's won MOP the last two seasons. Like I said, not flashy. Uh, he doesn't put up the huge yardage, but 37 touchdowns to 13 interceptions last season. I have a hard time ignoring numbers like that. Uh, he gets the gut. He gets the job done. He, he throws the touchdowns uh, and he gets it done. That's all I can say about Caleros. And uh, we'll see how long that that keeps up, like we talked about earlier. But to me, Kirk, as it stands now, he is by far and away the top quarterback in the CFL. Adam, uh, any additional thoughts on that? Yeah, you know what? I didn't actually pick him. I picked Tommy Stevens. No, I'm kidding. I didn't pick Tommy Stevens. <laughs> but uh, you know what? Uh, no, I, I, there's, there's a reason why Zach Kalaros is getting paid the most out of the quarterbacks right now. There's a reason why he's probably worth the most. He's got a receiving core that is absolutely terrifying that's coming back to help him out. I mean, you lose Greg Ellingson, oh, but I gain Kenny Lawler and keep everybody else. Come on, man. Uh, he's still got most of the offensive line that he had last year, uh, minus Michael Couture, who really was hurt for most of last year. So to me, uh, the Blue Bombers, I and it, hey, it pains me to say it when Zach Kalaros is doing so well, although I do wish him all the best. Uh, I just don't wish the color on his jersey all the best all the time. But you know what? He's a great quarterback. He's been one of the best quarterbacks, the most consistent. And that's the maybe the big key of this. The most consistent quarterback in the CFL for the last uh, X number of years. So, no, it's, it, it's no question for me. I do want to bring up, though, that I missed a few guys here that maybe are kind of surprising. I didn't put Jake Mayer on my list because of his performance in the playoffs. Uh, I don't know if they picked the right guy in Calgary to keep. I, I really don't know, and I'm, I'll am i be honest with you. I do not like Jake Mayer's throwing mechanism or throwing abilities. He can make a short throw. Great. Calgary set up for a long bomb, and I don't like it. So that's why I didn't put Jake Mayer on my list. And why I didn't put Bo Levi Mitchell on my list, the guy has not thrown well for two and a half to three years now. It, don't get me wrong. I sure hope Hamilton didn't make a huge mistake in the year they host the playoffs or host the Great Cup, but – I don't know. I just, I got a bad feeling about Bo Levi Mitchell this year. Uh, and I hope that he hears this and he gets really angry and wins the Grey Cup. So that's my thing in that. But you know what? Honestly, I just, I don't know why, but I didn't really have much for Bo. And the third one, because I got to give Richard an explanation on uh, Vernon Adams Jr. He When he plays per good, he plays really good. But when he plays bad, he plays really bad. So very inconsistent quarterback. Uh, in my case, you got to have a guy that's consistent at all times. And Vernon Adams just hasn't proven that anywhere he goes so far. Maybe this will be the year. Maybe. You never know. He's got less pieces uh, pieces to work with on his uh, uh, offense. Uh, so I don't know. I don't really care for uh, Vernon Adams Jr. at the moment. But, again, BLM or v VA or uh, uh, what do you call Jake Mayer, make me eat my words. It's really hard to fit a top five ranking here. Uh, Mike also agreed with Zach Caleros being number one. Trey and I, we will maybe we can touch on the guys we left off of our list here as well. But first, tell us who your number one quarterback in the CFL here is. Trey. I got to dra drag it out a little bit, get the sponsorship in. So I'll tell you my honorable mentions first. Uh, Cornelius just didn't feel like he got the job done quite yet. You guys did make me want to switch him out to put him as my number one just because it would have been kind of funny. But at the same time, I got to be a man of my word and keep who I put down. Um, like I say, I wasn't, I wasn't feeling mayor. I, I didn't when I, I got to watch that one game last year there in Calgary. I didn't like it watching it. Like Adam said, his arm just something weird. And the amount of baseball and football I watch, you can kind of just tell when a guy's arm isn't right. And there's something about it. But um, who else? I mean, Mazzoli, I think needed to be play more. I wasn't allowed to pick Strevler. Uh, you know, I, uh, I like the Richard suggestion, Drew Brown. I'm looking at his stats. Not bad for the limited playing time. But <clears throat> now I'm going to go off board here. Really off board here. He played, what, one drive of the Grey Cup. But I'm going to go with that only because he is technically the reigning 
great cup quarterback. And I think if you're if you're pinpointing currently the greatest, I got, he's got the ring. I got to do it out of respect to that cuz rings matter the most. It's not who cares what you do in the regular season when his boy got when um uh big Ben looking guy Bethel Thompson got hurt what he boo boo on his thumb or something was that what it was broken thumb or something he came in he didn't lose the game I got it I got to do that and you can I I almost changed it too when you said we're posting these I didn't realize we were posting <laughs> I thought this it was I thought this was gonna get the lead and only Chris and Richard know and who's gonna believe those two. But you know, like but and there you go. Chad and Kelly, think, your number one it, quarterback in the CFL. So wow. We did say you can use any logic you want that makes sense to you. And and it's hard to argue with that logic. So my question then is why is Ben Holmes not your number two quarterback in the CFL as the only other Argos quarterback on the roster? I didn't Wikipedia the third string quarterback of the Argos. That's <laughs> like I don't know. That's a good point. He didn't get he didn't get put in for that drive. There we go. Hey, it was, hey, it was kind of, I, I I understand Adam shaking his head, and I was really hoping Mike was here tonight because he would just be like we would have to mute him because he would just be like above me right now, telling me how wrong I am, and the Jets are still going to win the division somehow. Like that's all I'm going to hear. Um, next time I see him, but like it's Caleros didn't get it done the last time he was on the field, the way I look at it. And if Bethel Thompson was still in the league, oh, he'd, he'd be my number one. I would put him in there because he did it. But if I'm going to be fair, he, I can't pick him because, <laughs> you know, he went to Atlanta or wherever he went to. And the guy who did have that one drive is still under contract. So. Do you think there is potential for Chad Kelly to pull off a Nathan Rourke like season? Sure. <laughs> <laughs> no, I don't think so. I think I th- I think he could be competitive in the East. I, you know, I, I do I think he's going to be Nathan Rourke? No, do I think he's going to do I think he can maybe keep up with what 40-year-old Bo Levi, Fajardo in Montreal and Zoli's probably going to be in crutches in three weeks. Probably he can compete with that, right? You would think with Harris and Olette and I mean, yeah, Dinwiddie I, can go. I don't know. I, I, I Adam, you got to stop staring at me like that, bud. <laughs> Sorry, man. I'm just like, what in the world are you thinking? But I, I swear, I swear I could pass a drug test. Okay. Like, I swear. <laughs> I was I, going I, through in my mind as you were listing them off. I'm like, hmm, he hasn't mentioned this guy yet. Oh, wait, that's in the honorable mentions. Hasn't mentioned this guy. That's in the honorable mentions. Up until the last moment, I didn't know we were going to Chad Kelly. But I like it. It's bold. I love it. Uh, I think we pretty much mentioned every single starting quarterback in the league, though. <laughs> yeah. Honorable mentions for me, I also did not have Bo Levi Mitchell in my top five. I have him very low on my list because his play has declined every season to the point where Jake Mayer passed him on the depth chart last season. He's got a worse offensive line theoretically than last year now over in Hamilton. I mean, they gave up 13 sacks in Calgary. You can't get much better than that. Um I don't love the offensive game plan from Tommy Condell there either. So I took Bo Levi Mitchell off of my list there. Jeremiah Mazzoli, I wanted to put Mazzoli higher, but the injury scares me. And, you know, it was a couple of years of up and down play. Now he had that big injury. I'm not sure how he bounces back from that, even though I do think he has as good of a chance as anyone there. Uh, who else, I guess, didn't I have as a starting quarterback on my list? Chad Kelly. Sorry, I was going to say, did any of us main ev- mention Evans? Or does Dave he not Evan? count because he's not a starter? <laughs> I'm I just gonna, don't think he's top five. Because, okay, not there. Yeah, because he was, he was one on the bubble. I he was on my bubble, like if like maybe extended bubble, but I don't know. I almost thought too. I can't put two BC quarterbacks in the top five. <laughs> I think the one spot I differ the most from you guys is you had you guys had Trevor Harris at two, two, and three. The three of you, I didn't even have him in my top five, and. Yeah, he had a pretty good season last year. And and maybe this is a wrong way of looking at Trevor Harris, but to me, I look at him as a quarterback that, you know, has had all the talent, has had all the pieces in place for him, but it's kind of underwhelmed me ever uh, more and more as his career has gone along. You know, the the main story on Trevor Harris always seems to be, 
you know, can't put the touch, can't finish drives uh, is what we see more often than not. And I know the Riders did upgrade the offensive line there uh, with a couple of pieces this offseason. But is it enough to where I think uh, a quarterback like Harris that's not super mobile can succeed? Right. Cody Fajardo was sacked 70 times as one of the one of the most mobile quarterbacks in the CFL. Trevor Harris isn't going to be able to outrun in that situation. I see the wide receiver core much the same in Saskatchewan as it was in Montreal last year. So all of these guys were on the bubble for me. It was really hard for me to lock down, you know, Fajardo as my number five. I think Harris is right there as well. But uh, yeah, he did not make my top five for uh, how I view things for this upcoming season for me there. I think he's a bit on the decline there also. So that is our list of our top five quarterbacks to recap. Uh, I had uh, number one, Zach Caleros, two, Jake Mayer, three, Vernon Adams Jr., four, Taylor Cornelius, and five, Cody Fajardo. Uh, Mike had Caleros, Harris, Mayer, Bowie by Mitchell, and Vernon Adams Jr. Uh, correct me if I'm wrong. Uh, oh, I'm missing one. Oh, right. I forgot Chad Kelly at the top here. Trey had Chad Kelly as his number one. Uh, Zach Colaros, number two, Trevor Harris, three, Bo Levi Mitchell, four, Vernon Adams Jr., number five, and Adam, you've had Zach Colaros, uh, Trevor Harris, Taylor Cornelius, Jeremiah Mazzoli, and Cody Fajardo. So uh, we pretty much covered, correct me if I'm wrong, every starting quarterback in the, the CFL between a top five rankings in the four of us. I think that speaks more to the parity at the position than anything else, where Look, you guys have no idea how how hard of a time the three of us had coming up with this list here today where I looked at the list and I'm like, Caleros is number one. What do I do from here? Because we're at a state right now where the older quarterbacks are kind of on the decline and the newer quarterbacks haven't really had their breakouts yet. So what are we going to see? Yeah, Richard and Chad asked, are we going to revisit this list at the end of the season? I think we should. I think that's a great off-season show, end-of-season show to go look back on where we stand on our rankings throughout the off-season here. What do you guys think? Absolutely. I think that's a gr great idea. Uh, to me, I like I say, I mean, it, you look at some of these quarterbacks in the league, and you are just mentioning it, Ryan, there's no young quarterbacks that have really stepped up yet. That being said, that's why I kind of have two of them on my list there with Mazzoli and with Cornelius a little bit younger there. I'm hoping that one of them kind of takes the reins and becomes that next Ricky Ray or that next uh, Michael Riley. Uh, we haven't had anybody in this league for quite a while that's really showing anything. Who knows? Maybe it's Chad Kelly. I hope it is. But you know what? It, it, recently, we haven't had really any great like elite all-star non Non even the thought of it, they'd be on this list without even a question kind of quarterback. Uh, the fact that we pretty much kind of agreed, and you're, I, I was the same as you were, Ryan. I mean, I put on the, I think in our chat earlier, Cornelius, I pretty much, I said, well, we all know who number one is, now who's after that? Uh, minus uh, Trey, I think we all kind of came up with the same idea. But that being said, I mean, there's really nobody that stands out, and I hope somebody does this year. Otherwise, when the Atlantic schooners start up, we're going to have to go back to Detroit, Michigan, and bring back Kevin Glenn, aren't we? Oh, of course. He's a, at least as a quarterback's coach or anything or something like that. Uh, if there isn't a schooner's jersey with a Kevin Glenn uh, sticker and a five on the back of it. Actually, you know what? Whoever the traveling Glens are, can I join if I get a schooner's jersey and put a Glenn five on the back? I mean, it was put on by the Canadian Football Podcast Network crew, so you're part of the network now. <laughs> you can make it happen. Uh, Trey, this was your this was your idea to do the uh, the top five countdown of the quarterbacks. How are you feeling after uh, after we've gone through this? Feeling good, boys. Feeling confident. Um, yeah, I could see myself revisiting this, but then I'd probably will just put the winning quarter Grey Cup quarterback at number one then, right? Like to me, it's I, I I get I get where you guys are coming from hundred percent, but I just had a tough and maybe I'm a bitter, I'm bitter, I'm petty. You don't break up with me. I'm petty as heck. But like, you know, so maybe I'm just a little salty that Caleros left me cold in Regina and I just couldn't put him number one. You know, he's still my heart hasn't mended, but uh, is Mazzoli young? Uh, Mazzoli is 34. 30. It's a, he's a young 34. Yeah, he's young. Yeah, there we go. 
I know this was fun ranking the quarterbacks. Uh, it was a fun exercise. A uh, great debate here. Uh, we'll have to do this with other positions. Do it with other things as well. Let us know on social media. Give us ideas for our top five countdowns to do in, in episodes that are coming in the future. Uh, I think that pretty much does it. So let's get into wrapping it up here. Uh, well, uh, you can follow us over on social media if you would like to do so. Let me pull this up here. Oh, I've got to move that over. Hey, there we go. Um, you can find the podcast on Twitter at CF Countdown Pod or on Facebook.com slash CF Countdown Pod there as well. Uh, been a fun evening here this evening. We're running shows every two weeks at this point in the off season. So stay tuned there to find out when our next one is. You can find me on Twitter at Cooper Trooper 42. Uh, Mike's on Twitter at Mike Garrell. Hopefully he'll be back in the near future as well. I know he's pretty busy now as well. Uh, Trey, where can people find you on social media currently? And, uh, what else, what else do you all have going on besides ranking quarterbacks? Ah, yeah, you can find me at Trey Harness Link. Did a little little change. Uh, yeah, a little change. Just a little rebranding. Um, but I, I, I Twitter at Trey uh, Trey Harness Link. I got used to saying that. Eh. Um, not a lot. Last month of school, boys. Last grind, and then I don't know. Call of Duty and Fortnite tournaments all day. I don't really know, man. Uh, GTA Six. I don't. I don't. We'll figure it out. But I do a lot of horse racing stuff. The season picks up. Should be good times. And if you want to laugh at me about picking Chad Kelly, I don't mute or block people. I just stop replying. Adam? Well, you can find me at Adam Stewart one I mean, you probably get a lot of senior hockey stuff right now because uh, as unfortunate as it was that uh, my team kind of got eliminated out of the uh, senior provincial playoffs, we're still in the league finals and we made it to it. So we got to play the Rokenville Tigers once again. So if you want to hear me do play-by-play, you can go to at Theodore Buffaloes and, uh, or Theodore Buffs on Twitter here. And uh, yeah, you can listen to me do some play-by-play. It ain't the greatest, but hey, it's something to listen to on a Friday night. I get pretty excited also. So, you know, there's there's that too. So, But uh, that's what I'm going to be working on mainly here for the next uh, two weeks, especially because uh, that's all we got left for a season in hockey. And then it's all of a sudden getting closer and closer to that football season. So yeah, join me over there and uh, go Buffs. Hopefully we win a uh, uh, prevent, uh, league final uh, championship for once. By the way, the trophy's a little three-foot, little mini Stanley Cup. Ooh. So if I win that, or, well, if I don't, if the team wins that, I am so totally putting on the skates and going skating with that thing. Nice. And, and bring it with you when you come to the Grey Cup in 2025, you know, parade it around uh, at all the parties and uh and whatnot uh yeah no great work that you're doing with that adam and uh we're theodore buffalo fans for life here on the canadian football countdown now um uh, thanks to your introduction to it uh fun episode here this evening thanks to everybody who's joined us in the chat here also uh the great comments along the way always fun to interact with our audience uh, and that's all made possible by game time tv which you can learn more about at gametimetv.ca as mentioned, follow us on social media. Check out all the other great shows from around the Canadian Football Podcast Network at CF Pod Network. Whatever podcast platform you're listening or watching on, we always appreciate if you do a lot of the fun things that help us grow the show. You know, you can like the podcast. You can leave us a nice comment, subscribe, uh, leave us a rating and a review, uh, and share the show with your friends. Help us grow the show. We always appreciate all of that. And on behalf of our panel here this evening, Uh, Adam, Trey, I'm Ryan saying thank you for listening. Take care. Have a good one. Bye.